All right, having completed the basics of uh, the discounting method involved in the venture capital valuation model, the estimation of the number of new shares, the price per share, and so forth, uh, we're going to go back and take a look at what happens if there is actually another round, a second round. Um, we're going to call it an A round, since our first round was a B round. Um, and let's just say for the moment it's $3 million. Now, when we constructed our model, our forecast model, that $3 million should have shown up in a couple of places. And in fact, there it is. We get $3 million of equity financing raised in the third year. Um, and that should adjust uh, the equity account as well, which it does. And uh, it results in a fair amount of cash being on the balance sheet at the time of close, which is now going to be paid out um, to the shareholders at the time of, um, of the sale. That all looks pretty good. Uh, the other thing that's happened here is that um, we had written some if logic here about um, this line showing up as a Series A investor proceeds required in the event that the number in the event that there is a second round, uh, and the calculation of that number is identical to the calculation of the seed of, of the present value that we uh, arrived at using a present value formula for the seed equity proceeds required. What we're trying to do here is figuring out figure out what the Series A investors require at the time of sale in the event that uh, they make an investment, in this case of $3 million. Well, the calculation, we'll start the calculation the same way we did with the seed equity proceeds, uh, seed, seed equity investors proceeds. We look at the amount of their investment, which can be any number, and we'll make it three million in this case, because it's an assumption, times one plus, oops, I'm sorry, I need a bracket, one plus uh, the required rate of return for A round investors, which in this case is assumed to be 30%. And that's going to be raised to a certain number of years. It's going to be raised to the number of years that, that their investment is outstanding. Now we know that the exit multiple and that, that the exit year in this case is year five. And we also know that you can specify the year in which that investor investment is made. The year the year of the A round financing. So we will do that, capture it with a absolute cell reference, and we should have the correct number here, except for one small problem, like uh, the calculation earlier, it needs to be expressed in negative terms. So we do that, and there it is. A $3 million investment by the uh, by an a, a set of A-round investors in, in this case, year two, is going to require a payoff of $6.6 .6 million in order for them to get a 30% rate of return. Uh, it reduces the value of the company to the founders from roughly $60 million to roughly $57 million, but it also uh, increases uh, the amount of cash on the balance sheet uh, and, um, the, uh, and lowers the risk of the investment, to certainly to the founders, and that may be a trade-off that the founders will want to make, and, and the seed round investors as well. So that is, uh, that's the fundamental nature of that. Uh, of that calculation. Now, there's nothing much to it. Uh, the, the rest of it is uh, very similar. Um, you'll see here that the logic that's already built into this model uh, takes a, a, issues a certain number of new shares to the Series A investors, dilutes everybody else in the process, and you can see the amount of that dilution is 5.867%. Uh, so uh, you may recall that in the original financing, the original owners and the management equity people got diluted by some amount of money, which was actually higher than 35%. Uh, and now that there's a second round of investment, uh, those seed investors are going to get diluted by 5.867%, uh, down from, I believe it was about 37%, 36%. So, um, so the way this calculation is done, again, the, the logic is set up here um, to make it a little bit easier to see. Um, because we now have shown, uh, because we now have a Series A investment, uh, the size of the round is again copied from the um, original um, assumption. Uh, 
The discount rate also comes from the assumption. The ownership at close, the ownership at uh, at close, um, is equal to C C one fifty four divided by C one fifty five. Let's refer to this table again. It is the six point six million that we just calculated divided by the X value below before management options, and and that obviously is not diluted by a later round in this calculation. But you can see here that the difference between the percent ownership at close of 36% and the 33.8% represents a roughly 6% dilution, which accounts for the dilution in the Series A. Uh, the number of new shares that are going to be required uh, for the Series A investors is calculated very much the same as the new shares for the seed round, except that um, in this case, you're, you've got to account for the number of new shares available for the seed round. Recall here that we are looking at this still from time zero, looking forward and anticipating that in the second year, there's going to be a Series A financing of $3 million, and what dilution does that require? So you can see that the, the fundamental uh, analysis here is we have to start by figuring out what what that $3 million dilution is going to be, what the effect is going to be on our own ownership, and therefore what dilution or what ownership we need at close uh, to, um, to make this uh, a good investment for us. Uh, the per share value is calculated very much the same way. It's the $3 million divided by the new shares. The pre-money value, of course, has risen at that point. Uh, it's uh, $30 million per share divided by the number of or, or times the number of shares that are outstanding at that point, uh, which is actually a number higher than uh, a million. And so the pre-money value has gone up, and once again we have a problem with our investment, but as we know from our prior experience, uh, that is simply the exit value of that investment divided by the original value of the investment, 2.2 times. So the assumption is here that a, there will be another round in year two of $3 million, that investors in that round will require a 30% rate of return, that the 30% rate of return amounts to 2.2 times their money, uh, that therefore they will need to get 6.6 .6 million uh, in return for their $3 million investment, and, um, and the implicit dilution for the seed round it, that needs to be compensated or is an increase in their in their ownership to uh, almost 36 percent of the business, and that shows you how you would think about a second round. And you can think about how, by extension, if there were if there was a Series B or a Series C or a Series D, you'd go through pretty much exactly the same logic. Now we haven't created the logic here for you, uh, but if you're if the business you're looking at looks like it's going to need many rounds as for example with the life sciences business uh, You're going to need to do this uh, for every series that you anticipate And that pretty much shows you what we would need what we need to know with respect to the fundamentals of the venture capital valuation method as it applies to the case of Fred Thompson and his new business